Okay, so welcome back to episode 1B of Useless But Fun Projects. It's 1B because this is actually a follow-up video from the previous uh, long video which explains like the mechanics uh, and basically what I'll say is a card counting method or, or an elimination method. It's a process of elimination really. Yeah, it's a simple method but it's effective because it helps us to tell us uh, which couples are actually impossible or even perfectly matched even though they have not been sent to the truth proof. Right? And at the same time, it helps us to avoid picking impossible couples to be sent uh, into the ceremony, which is actually a really good thing already. The other thing is, is um, of course, if you do use this elimination method as you are watching the season, you can probably arrive at the answer of who is the correct combination, who is matched with who basically, um, even before the participants themselves realize that. Uh, partially because they don't have the code, partially because uh, most of the time the participants are just like angry and drunk half the time, right? They're not really thinking. But yes, I don't think we expect much from this show anyway. What we want to do today is just look at whether we can come up with a strategy such that we can maximize the probabilities of us winning the game, okay? And not only that, we, can, we are going to do that without knowing a single thing about the participants. Okay? Is that possible? Yes. If it's not possible, there will not be this video. So yes, let's take a look at that. So I set up a simulated environment uh, where we know nothing about the participants. They are just, they're just numbers, basically. Um, and we, I have coded up some strategies, uh, which means that these are without any sort of like a intervention. It's like an algorithm, basically. It just tells us, that, look at this, pick this and do this, and then we'll see uh, what the outcomes are like. And then I run these simulations over hundreds or if not thousands of games to come up with the final uh, so-called win rate. So the strategies that we're going through today just focuses on picking the pair to be sent to the truth booth. So we're not going to uh, optimize on the combinations that we're going to send for the matching ceremony. The combinations that are going to be sent for the matching ceremony are simply uh, the, the combination which the highest sum of pair probabilities. Okay, so we just take all the 10 pairs and we sum up their probabilities. Uh, the, the combination with the highest probability, we'll just send them to the matching ceremony. So, but then what we're going to focus on today is a strategy to identify which pair to pick to be sent to the truth booth. Of course, uh, in the game itself, um, the, the, there's a during the day game well, that sort of like cuts off certain pairs from being sent to the truth booth. In this simulation, we're going to assume that we can always send the pair that we want to the truth booth. One more thing to note is that I created these strategies after season one. So I was not aware that there was such thing called a blackout penalty. So what we're optimizing for today is the highest win rate. Yeah, which means that, okay, we win the game. We're not optimizing for the total pool money, which can be less uh, if we happen to hit some blackouts. Okay, so now on to the strategies. Um, first off, we're just going to look at the baseline win rate, okay? What is it like if we just randomly pick the pairs to be sent to the truth booth and then we pick the highest combi the highest sum of probabilities as the combinations, okay? So this is the baseline. It means that um, we will just randomly pick a pair to be sent to the truth booth. When this pair turns out to be true, of course, we'll include them in the combinations. Uh, if it turns out to be false, obviously, we will not pick them for the ceremony. So this still uses the elimination method, uh, but the, the, the process of sending the pairs to the truth booth is purely random, okay? And in these simulations, uh, the win rate is actually quite high. It's actually at 78%, okay? Which is actually good news because by simply using like the elimination method, you actually have a decent chance of winning. Okay, but random picking sounds dumb, right? And of course, it's not, it's not anything uh, interesting. You won't wanna, you wanna do something better than that. So we're gonna look at strategy one, which is let's pick the pair that has the highest probability of being true, right? So intuitively, you might think that if this pair has the highest probability of being true, we send them to the truth booth. Um, if they are indeed true, it actually helps us a lot because it eliminates all the nine other pairings uh, that it could possibly, that the person could possibly have been paired with. Yeah. So strategy one is sending the pair that has the highest probability to the truth booth. And the result is unfortunately not so great. Uh, the win rate is just about 75%. So it's just a bit short of randomly picking. Okay, strategy number two is to go through every single pair and to calculate what I call an elimination gain. Okay, so when a pair is being sent to a truth booth, an elimination gain is what I consider if this pair 
were to be true, a perfect match, how many possible combinations does it eliminate from the total remaining amount of possible combinations that are valid? Yeah, so the more combinations that could be eliminated, the better it is for us because you know our chances of winning just goes up. Yeah, so we're going to stand in a couple that has the highest number of combinations to be eliminated if they do turn out to be indeed a perfect match. Uh, but it turns out it doesn't give such a great win rate. Okay, the win rate is just 70%, so it's actually even worse uh, than strategy one. Yeah, and the reason is because. Uh, probably because um, we are not actually accounting for the probability that that it is true because we are just assuming that we're just going to pick the pair that has the highest elimination gain regardless of the probability. Now strategy 3 is a bit um, of a mix of strategy 1 and 2. It uses both sets of information there and this is where it gets interesting. So um, elimination gain again uh, but in this time, uh, we're going to calculate elimination gain a bit differently. We are going to calculate elimination gain by looking at the probability of it being true multiplied by the number of combinations it will eliminate if it's true. Add that to the probability of the pair being false multiplied by the number of combinations eliminated when it is false. Okay, so it's like a weighted uh, elimination gain method okay and we sum them up together that is our so-called elimination gain score we're going to pick the pair which has the highest score okay and now this is where we hit jackpot so the win rate for this strategy strategy three um, is a very very high 97 percent okay so that's almost there you're almost there it sounds complicated but this is the strategy to use and you don't have to worry that it is complicated because if you ever find yourself being called up to be part of the show, just ask me for my code, run the code while everyone else is getting 